care to stay a while why technology exists. Caught and twisted in the cypress branch, the plastic grocery bag of the heart asks, where did my aura go? Who locked the door outside the consumerist universe? It was likely the underground chemist I know, who is also a novelist and close in appearance but opposite in temperament to a guy I once danced with, a Marxist drifter who was a lousy dresser but as happy as a full-time drunk could get. <laughs> Mine, the only childhood so buoyantly shrugging off its reprimand, with its hollow shoulder, its crayon scrawl grim. Chapter 3. Please remove this shrapnel from my chest, you French philosophers who keep misconstruing my shoelaces as tripwires. <laughs> Carefree is a suburb of Phoenix, according to the textbook salesman, whose daughter will train to become a dental hygienist, even though we all believe in her ability, in her ability to churn out middling works of art. <laughs> Beneath the stairs, a fledgling philanthropist is about to write, where does origination come from, but curls up in, into a ball instead. Chapter 5. The line pit's already dug for our next political letdown. Notice the arbor's vine-riddled latticework where lozenges of sun kiss the graves of your eyes. In the hotel lobby, the dispossessed, to see the fountain as a chandelier, try standing on your head. This room has all the charm of a wasp's nest on fire, a tourist that I am perpetually passing through. Last night, I fought it in the ashtray. I saran wrapped the moon. Chapter 6. Stuck in your throat is every church bell which rusted before it could sing. Come talk to me, she said at the prenatal class reunion. When you're ready, just shut up. In the orchestra pit of my argument, it seemed as if the kettle drum player was either brainless or drunk. How drizzles denizens once believed in night rainbows, but not in the benevolent intentions of mist. Naturally, I was there after the accident, along with the dawn's chorus of robins worshipping in the aftermath. Chapter 7. The least hasty among us swung in on the hinge of a fly's wing, set the small fire reflected in your wine glass full of water. It's true, another celebrity sex tape on the loose means more than all the ocean's undiscovered mountains and valleys. Chapter 8. As she jumped the turnstile, she winked. New York was like that, according to the umpire, bent over his letterpress like a dyslexic prince. That morning, we tidied up and hijacked innocence for more sleep. Only the pilot light kept its lonely vigil. How our lookalikes, having traded extravagant gifts, loosened the turnbuckle of their scruples. I was orphaned by an untied shoelace. You were found throwing vinegar into the eyes of lions. This is the epilogue to that series. I imagined, I could imagine, all the doors of all your houses opening and closing like the valves of some sad musical instrument. But 
I was mistaken. Mm. Okay, that's what she'll get. So I will read just a couple.